everybody and welcome to this year's high school coaches basketball preview show. My name is Mike Martin. Joining me is the coach Chris Wright. Chris, we got four coaches coming in. Why don't you tell our viewers who they're going to be? Well, it's the same as we've had for the last few years. We have Tim Schultz from Sheboygan South and Tom Desatel from Sheboygan North. And we got uh, Todd Decker from Sheboygan Lutheran and Brett Flipsy from Sheboygan Christian. No new faces like in football? No, not this year. Now we're gonna, at the end, we'll recap the uh, Fox River Classic Conference uh, season in the Central Lakeshore. We'll make our uh, annual predictions and uh, we're gonna step out right now and we come back, I'll have Todd Decker from Sheboygan Lutheran, so stay tuned. Let's not forget America's veterans. Log on to thankyouveterans.org and write a note of thanks to someone who served our country, a public service of Paralyzed Veterans of America. Joining me is Todd Decker from Lutheran High School. Todd, thanks a lot for stopping in. I know you got practice tonight and a game coming up this week. Uh, looks like it'll be a pretty exciting season. Uh, most teams are driven by their seniors, and I know you've got a couple on your team. Who are some of those players, and what roles do you expect those guys to fill? Uh, we do have kind of a senior-laden team this year, and um, uh, we have some guys that had some minutes last year that will help out. Uh, Dane Poth, who had some minutes last year until he got hurt later on in the season. We're expecting big things from him. Carl Nimmer, uh, a starter last year, he'll be back at the guard position. Uh, we have Jacob Wheeler, who's his summer, his game just uh, has taken off. So we do have some seniors with uh, Zach Jensma and Tyler Hosenstein, some guys coming off uh, their, uh, their junior years and that. So we are looking forward to those seniors. Now I know another guy you have coming back is someone you're very familiar with. He's a junior this year, and that's your son, Sam. Um, He's probably the best player in the area. Talk a little bit about him and his game. Well, Sam uh, has grown so much from last year being at about 6'3", and now he's at 6'7", and the thing that's really helped us is that he still has those um, guard uh, capabilities, and uh, he can get out on the court, and that really helps us in trying to get our transition game going. And now with his size, we're going to try to mix, up, mix that up a little bit, and have him get down to the post area. And depending upon uh, matchups, if we get those, uh, then we'll put him on the outside, inside, and uh, he can stroke the long ball, but we'll hopefully get some stuff inside this year too. Does he have any more inches left in him? I hope so, I hope <laughs> so. I think some other people do too down the line, but uh, I think so. Um, he did grow so fast, but uh, and his shoe size just went up to the 14s now, and uh, like a I was telling you, yeah, the there you now. go. <laughs> I was telling you, his wingspan is uh, pretty incredible at the 6'11 too. So he can do some things for us, and God's given him a lot of uh, ability, and he's such a hard worker. So we expect big things from Sam, and he just loves the game, so he gets after it. Now let me take you back, way back when he was born. Jim Eisner told me this once when his son Todd was born. The doctors were able to do some measurements on their legs and, and project how tall and they came within, you know, less than an inch of how tall Todd was going to be. Did you ever have any measurements like that done when your children were born? See well, how tall they would be? Well, that's funny. One of my best friends is our, our doctor, and uh, he always was trying to figure those things out. And he was real accurate with uh, John, our, our other son, and even Hannah. We got her involved with that. And uh, he's a little bit uh, short on Sam. I'm glad he made that mistake. So, uh, <laughs> That's a good mistake. Yeah, it is. So, but yeah, it's incredible how he's grown. And uh, now he's in the weight room getting bigger, too. One of the things that as a coach you have to do is deal with uh, different strategies by the other coaches. And I know with your son being such an outstanding player, um, most games, you know, you're going to see different strategies to try and stop him. What have you seen in the past? What do you expect to see this year? And, and what do you do to counteract those strategies? I know it's a long question, but... Right, and it's, it's a tough question. And, um, but last year we saw it at the end of the season, there were some box and ones. Uh, a couple teams even went triangle and twos. And you know they're making the, uh, the other guys on the team uh, show what they can do. And I'm trying to challenge those seniors that you talked about a little bit earlier. Hey, this is your chance to show and uh, like I also said, we want to get in that transition a little bit, get up and down the court so we can't get those defenses lock in as much as we can with Sam. And uh, so we've been practicing a little bit more with that this year, uh, experience from before because John had the same thing. 
So it, it's not something that we've had, uh, it's new, mm -hmm. but it, it, it's difficult and the kids have to learn how to read a little bit more than just, just a set play. Do you think as the, the other players on the team have uh, developed over the course of the off season, they've taken that into consideration when they think about, you know, I gotta be ready for stuff that they'll do to him so I can excel when I'm called on? I hope so, and we've talked about that. Um, as a coach, I wanna get those guys to know what's going on and hey, this is what's expected of you, this is what you gotta do, let's prepare for it and do the best we can. And if we're prepared and uh, some nights you have it, some uh, you don't, then hopefully I'll, someone else will step through and, or step up. And if that, they are successful, you won't see those junk defenses and then we can get in our own offense and uh, then get going with, in the things that we believe in doing that. Now you open the season uh, tomorrow <clears throat> night against Green Bay NEW. It's the same team you opened up with last year. When you play this first game, what are you looking for out of your team You know, as you play? And, and I think you have another non-conference game coming up before the season starts, regular conference season, I mean. But what do you look for in your team? Well, we just want to make sure that we execute. You know, you can, you can be on that practice, a practice court and get, keep on going and say, oh, we're set. But when you get against a good team like Green Bay New, which is state ranked and was at state last year, uh, it's a good test for us. And we just want to make sure everyone's on the same page and, hey, give it their all. You know, just play hard and enjoy the game that God's given us and uh, then good things are going to happen and it's a long season and I like the challenge of that first game that we're going to have. Okay, last question Todd, we got about 30 seconds left. Um, how do you see the conference panning out this year? I know Christian should be pretty tough. It seems like Gooseberg is always at the top. How do you see it panning out and where do you see your team fitting in? Well, every year it's getting better and better and um, Oosberg, you know, Kevin does such a great job with the guy, his team, and I still think that's the team to beat. Howard Grover, the new coach, they have a lot of talent. Uh, Ozaki, uh, Isaiah does a nice job uh, with them, and uh, we hope to be in that upper four or five guys, and, you know, any given night, you've got to be going after it, and uh, we hope that we can be with the best of them. All right, Todd, I look forward to seeing your team and, and watching Sam play, and uh, when we come back, Tom Desitel from Sheboygan North will begin, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. Losing weight's a lot harder than gaining it, but with every step, I lower my risk for type 2 diabetes and heart disease. And that makes every step very much worth the effort. Learn how you can help stop diabetes. Visit CheckupAmerica.org or call 1-800-DIABETES. Joining me is head coach Tom Desitel from Sheboygan North. Uh, Tom, thanks a lot for stopping in. I know this is a really busy time of year, and uh, we're taping on a Monday. You guys have a game on Tuesday, uh, so I really appreciate you coming in. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about uh, who your key players are this year. Well, you, uh, coach always looks toward his top players from last year that are returning, and Derek Van calligan has been a two-year starter for us. Devin Yerk was all-conference last year. Certainly Jake Stengel, this is his third year on the varsity too. So we're counting on those guys. You also look toward your seniors and we've got Brady Cassidy, uh, who's our tallest player on the team at about 6'4". We're not a real tall team, but he certainly made some strides during the off season. How hard is it to get some of those football player type guys that come in to play basketball, get them in basketball shape? Well, if they're not too bulky, then they respond pretty quickly, and uh, so we're kind of uh, blessed in that we have uh, skilled positions, quote, and football kids out uh, for the basketball team. One of the things that uh, Chris and I have talked about over the years is, you know, we go over to a Christian or over to Lutheran, they seem to have some really tall kids, and we go and watch North and South play, and uh, they're not as tall as those schools. What do you think is the, the deal well, with that? you have to make the most of what you have. <laughs> and just leave it at that. <laughs> we don't like these quick answers, Coach. you got to talk longer than that. Um, how do you see your team doing this year? I know well, it was kind of um, a tough year last year. but Well, we're going to count on, uh, uh, on some balance, and we hope we'll, hopefully we'll have some depth as well. Um, Ethan Guskey um, played a little bit at the end of last year. He certainly stepped up growing this summer. Um, he'll be uh, helping us out, I'm sure. Reed Conter. Uh, uh, a steady JV player from last year. I think that's one of your uh, things you always look to as your top JV players. And Luke Belmore, uh, another one. Um, uh, when you will talk be about those kind of guys, it seems like your team is not going to get out muscled underneath the boards. 
Well, uh, keep in mind that they're 6'2", and uh, the De Piers of the world are 6'7". So. Yeah, that, that does make it tough you right there. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed over the years, Coach, and uh, I think as a player playing for you, I'd like it, especially if I wasn't a starter, is I know I'd get to play. Uh, what's your philosophy about getting so many kids in the games, and uh, what drives the substitutions? Well, we'd like to play seven or eight until the game has been won or lost. Uh, in the non-conference games, and we play six of them, uh, two non-conference games before our season opener against uh, De Pere, um, in those two non-conference games, we're very likely to see um, nine or ten players playing. But um, we'll get them in and out of there. We want them to play hard for a certain amount of time, and then uh, uh, we'll give them a break and, and get somebody else in there and see how they go. One of the things that I noticed on the schedule, and, and we had talked before uh, you came in, was the idea of playing uh, some very tough teams in your first two games. I think it's uh, Verona and, and Olmsted, which will be played by the time we get this broadcast. But uh, mm -hmm. what is your philosophy about, and I know you've done this all the time, you know, you've always scheduled the best teams you can get in or, or can get a hold mm -hmm. of. Uh, what is your philosophy in regards to playing hard teams early in the season? Would you rather play those games maybe a little later when your team is uh, well, more accustomed we, to playing? Uh, the conference schedule this year calls us to play our second conference home game in mid-January, January 14th. So you've got to... Don't get me going on that, Coach. <laughs> yeah, so we've got to uh, get our um, some toughness to us. Uh, and uh, hopefully get some non-conference games that are at home. Uh, so we scheduled Verona. Verona was to the state tournament, Division I state tournament, three of the last five years. We played at their place last year. They're coming to us this year. Uh, after that, Homestead, uh, certainly a power to be in all sports in this area of the state, and uh, we'll have them on the road on Saturday. That's supposed to get us ready for our conference opener the following Friday. I know I was looking at the conference schedule with you and South and there are a number of dates where both you and South are on the road or both of you are at home the same night and it uh, makes it tough trying to set up a TV schedule and I know a lot of the uh, basketball aficionados in the community love going to both sides of town now they got to pick mm -hmm. so it's kind of a goofy schedule. Uh, 25th year since the, con since the state tournament championship team and uh, I was lucky enough to be a part of Chilton, but uh, when you think back to that 86 team, uh, what memories do you hold dear to you? Uh, it's tough for me to remember last year's team, but 25 <laughs> years ago is, is quite, a, quite a long way away, uh, <laughs> but they remember it, and I, I do remember the state champion, uh, championship as well as uh, most of the successful teams we've had down the down the way. So so we remember it. It'll be good to see some of those uh, athletes. Um, we plan to have a reunion. We're fairly certain of the date right now. We got out the first uh, email to the participants and just trying to get a feel for when they can be back. Back here, we hope that the uh, Sheboygan sports fans that remember back in the day will uh, have a chance to, to see them and ask them questions as to where they are and, and what they're doing and that sort of thing. So we're all anxious for that type of reun well, reunion. I look forward to that too, and I suspect there'll be something in the paper when they're able to firm oh, up the oh, date. Uh, yes, without a doubt, without a doubt. They've got to firm up the date uh, by finding out much, which of these athletes can come back. All right. Well, Coach, thanks a lot for stopping in. I really appreciate it. When we come back, Chris Wright will be talking to uh, Brett Flipsy from Christian. Here comes the monster, the Tickle Monster. <laughs> Just imagine what a little time can do for your family. Welcome back, everybody. I'm with uh, Sheboygan Christian coach uh, Brett Flipsy. Uh, Brett. 44 and 5 over the last two years, and I saw something like 88 and 13 over the last four years. What an incredible run for you guys! Yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun. Um, it's been a been a program we've put together and um, started out slow, but uh, we really put some nice kids together, and they've they've just you know bought into the system, and and we've been we've been blessed. Yeah, well, that leads kind of to my next question: uh, Is it the system? Is it the players? Is what do you attribute to all the success? 
Well, I think it's a little bit of everything. I mean, you got to have you got to have talented players to to win basketball games, and that we have. Um, we've um, we've put the system together, and the kids have bought into it. Uh, we don't do a lot of you know getting into it. We don't do a lot of the summer programs. Uh, we try to keep it together as a group. Um, go to a couple tournaments, and, and the kids just really enjoy it and, and have excelled. So it's both. We've got a good system. We've got good coaching staff, and um, the kids have just you know, been talented, talented kids that we, we've had. Well, with that success last year, you got as high as a number two ranking in state. Unfortunately, Randolph was ranked number one, but, you know, two years ago you beat them. Last year you had a nice game against them, but it's almost kind of too bad you guys never got to get to the, to the big dance. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's your goal every year to get there, and, you know, you got to beat the best to get there, and it just so happens Randolph is, is a powerhouse, and and a quality program, and we've got to run into them, so we've got to beat them. Yeah. So we, we were able to do that two years ago, just not able to do it last year. Yeah, maybe that sectional final is the state championship game, but anyways, you lost quite a bit from last year. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, oh, definitely. I mean, we're losing four starters. Um, any one of them, you know, where it was able to carry our team last year. So, you know, we did lose a lot, um, but just keep plugging along. We just use the system and, and get the kids plug them back in. And with that, who are some of the kids we can look forward to this year? Um, we've got uh, Zach Flipsy as a senior, uh, my son. Uh, we've also got Dustin Brower, a uh, 6'7 um, center. Uh, we've got Kyle Calvert, a junior, he's about 6'5 wing player. Um, uh, Brandon Wissey, he'll, you know, he's power forward for us. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be competitive again this year. And you said a little bit earlier before we came on that uh, you're going to be a little tall again, which is, which doesn't hurt. Can't can't uh, you know take away height. Yeah, you can't teach height. So it's it's nice to have a couple couple uh, tall kids in the middle, and uh, it, it enables you to do a few more things defensively. All right, you did mention your son Zach. Uh, how's it been to coach your son? A, a big thrill for you? Absolutely. Um, there's nothing like it. Um, I've coached for I believe it's been 14 years now, and um, I've been able to to coach my son. This is his third year on varsity. And uh, it's, it is just a joy to, to see him grow um, as a basketball player, as a person. And you get to take that home and, and, you know, I take him home from practice every day and we talk about the, the day ahead, the, what we just did in practice. Uh, he gives me his insights, you know, things that you don't normally get as a coach. You get to see, you know, you know some of the insights that, that he's getting in the locker room that you don't always see as a coach. But um, it's just been a joy to, to see him progress. I remember kind of talking to him. I think we interviewed him last year. I talked right after about, you know, how's it been with him. He said it was pretty much the same thing. It was nice to talk about that things. And, you know, you guys kept it kind of on a level keel. You know, in today's society, you don't always see that, but it's nice that a father and son can have that relationship. It is. It is. Um, and also, if you really uh, look at our conference, we've got three coaches coaching their, coaching their uh, own kids this year. All right. Uh, I see uh, Oostburg being really tough. I know they, they came up through the years and things like that, but I really see your conference this year is, you know, maybe some of the bottom's going to move a little bit closer to the top, and you know, I think some of the top's going to move down. I think it's going to be very competitive. Oh, definitely. I, there's some, t some teams that um, they're going to have, you know, if you look at it, some of the teams that were near the bottom the last couple of years, uh, they're going to jump up and beat somebody, and people are going to question, how did you lose to those teams? <laughs> but they're really, they've come along. We've got some excellent coaches in our conference, and, you know, you talk about the system that everyone has. You know, years ago, you know, some of the other schools didn't have a system, and now the coaching staffs that are in our conference really do a nice job. And uh, there's going to be some teams jump up and, and uh, beat the Oostbergs, beat the Howards Grove, and those are the two teams that, you know, I see are the, the cream of the crop this year. Well, I'm sure a lot of those teams, too, want to catch you guys as well. Hard to believe, though, but, you know, this show will air later, but you guys start tomorrow already and start off with a tough component in uh, Mantuak Lutheran. And you guys ready? And how's practice been for you? Um, again, we lost a lot from last year's team. So we're introducing a lot of new players into new roles. And um, I'm not sure we're ready yet. <laughs> it's early in the season. They only give us, you know, five practices or seven practices before you're your first game and you can't get everything in so we'll you know and same thing with Manitowoc Lutheran I, I'm not sure they're going to be ready so whoever's the most prepared will win that one. Well thanks again for coming in you've had a, a wonderful squad the last few years and actually we have you in about a week and a half so we look forward to that. When Thank I return you. we'll have Sheboygan South coach Tim Schultz.
You have the time to give and your country needs you. Take what you learn during your life and apply those skills to your community. Shape tomorrow by being a mentor and tutor for children. Make independence a reality for people to continue to make their house their home. Make a difference today. Get involved. We're back here with uh, Coach Schultz from Sheboygan South. Coach, uh, final 16 runs, sectional finals last two years. It's always great to get to sectionals, and you had two chances to get to state, but you didn't win, but, I mean, that's, that's quite a run for you guys. Yeah, I think it's great for the program. Um, it's personally it kind of hurts, you know, you get that close. You don't know how many chances you're going to get, but it definitely sets up for something, goals for the future, and lets guys know you work hard during the season, and, uh, you know, you can get there. It's not impossible. Right, and actually you guys played very well. I think you fell behind 11-2 to two in the first quarter and, mm -hmm. you know, actually played very well, just couldn't get over the hump there. Well, we couldn't put the ball in the hoop is what it comes down to. I think we were 2-17 of 17 in the first half and struggled the whole entire game. It's one of those games where you look back at it, you know, if we would have done this a little bit better, we could have won, but, you know, move on to the next year now. Yeah, and there's no question about it. Uh, with that, uh, one of the key things going in, obviously, is Ethan Berlin, injury mm -hmm. with football. How's he doing? He appears to be fine. Um, I don't think he'd tell me any different uh, if it was, the knee was bothering him. You know, I asked him right from the start if he had any issues, any problems, let us know, and he just kind of smiles. And, but I don't, I don't see any difference in him right now than what I saw during the summer last season. And so it seems that he, he escaped what could have been a pretty serious knee injury. Yeah, and it was such a fear. I mean, the first thing everybody talked about after the injury for the football season is, oh, no, there goes the mm -hmm. basketball season. And you need his leadership. Oh, definitely. Um, along with him, and we had uh, three captains and three seniors, and Cal Blusky, Ethan Berlin, and, and Riley Tudis, and we're going to need those guys. Um, with Ethan, it's his third year in varsity. He's the only three-year guy. Um, I did mention to him at the, you know, at the end of last season, uh, he could be the first guy, and I believe in the history of South, to go to sectional finals three years in a row and something to work for. Um, and he's, you know, he's just a hard worker and a great kid. Not a hard worker you do. You, you mentioned Riley. He's quite an athlete. Yeah, he had a, a great football season, obviously, being All-State. Um, has worked his tail off uh, for not only football, but for basketball. Uh, put in a lot of time in the weight room, uh, coming in open gyms. Um, you know, he and, and Ethan and Cal, being the three captains, have really, really pushed themselves to hopefully have a really good senior year. Uh, with every year, you got to graduate some kids, and it seems like you graduate a lot of frontline guys. You're going to need some guys to step up in that and Somebody's got to rebound and, and defend the post. Yeah, exactly. And that's, you know, those are team type things that we really work hard on and we concentrate on. And those have really been two areas, team defense and rebounding, where we, we stress every day in practice. Uh, we are fortunate where we have uh, five seniors and then three guys who are juniors that at the end of the year last year were all up on varsity. So they have a, a pretty good feel of what's going on. But there are some, you know, replacing Brandon Bernabo and Jake Reuter, who themselves were three-year players, it isn't easy to do to replace that experience. Well, we mentioned before the show some <clears throat> schools don't get their players always to come out. But, you know, and I look at your roster and you think of, you have all the athletes. I mean, you got Ditter and you got Murray and you got Blusky and, you know, I, you know, Anderson, I mean, Planton. It seems like you get all the kids out for your team. I mean, you got all the kids, which is nice to have so many athletes. Right, yeah, they are very athletic, you know, but the hard or difficult part about it is with basketball, you can't always rely on the athleticism. You got the, the skill level um, has to be there and you got to work together as a team. Now, having the athletes is great, but still got to put the ball in the hoop. And we had a scrimmage just last weekend, and that's the one area where we, we struggled with, which I kind of expect early on in the season with a lot of guys coming off of fall sports, um, just putting in the practice time. But yeah, it's great to have athletes and allows us to do you know, maybe a few things that um, we haven't been able to do in the past because we didn't have that big number of athletes that we have this year. Well, some programs too, they play six, seven kids. It seems like you play 10, 11 kids. You get a lot of kids out mm -hmm. on the floor to contribute and it seems like, you know, trying to figure out what they're gonna do. And so then they work their way so by the fourth quarter they're ready. So you do play a lot of kids though. Right, definitely, that's my philosophy. If these guys are putting in the time and they're working hard, um, they deserve to be out on the floor. Now, obviously some players are gonna get more time than others, but we find ways to get them in. I think it's an enjoyment thing for the guys that they know that they're gonna have a chance to play. Um, it also, we, we emphasize the fact that every day in practice, you got to come to work hard. And if you come to work hard, well, 
you know, we'll throw you that proverbial bone and give you a chance to get out there and make something happen. Well, and it seems, you know, <clears throat> it, I don't see a big step down even through the years. You know, it seems like they're all kind of equal. I mean, you don't always see that drop. And again, when it comes to the fourth quarter, you got the guys on the floor. But it seems like, you know, when you need guys down the line and through the season, those guys who got the playing time can help you. Well, we work hard in practice in developing that. And it's a credit to the players because they continue to work hard all year. I don't think we've really, in the last, myself, in the last, in the last probably, well, in the whole time I've been at South, I've never really had a problem with that, give or take a few guys here or there. But you know, they fortunately they buy into the philosophy and they know that you know hard work is going to pay off for them and they'll get in the game. Last thing, let's talk a little bit about the conference. You know, I agree with you. We talked earlier. I think mm -hmm. the pier is going to be way up there, but I really see kind of similar to the. Uh, the uh, CLC, a lot of the top teams have kind of dropped a little bit, and the bottom teams, I think on any given day, anybody can beat anybody. I think in our conference, the pier has to be considered the top, and they have three guys that are going to start that are scholarship players. Um, so it's going to be, uh, people will be aiming at them, but then you're right, it does kind of sandwich in the middle with a lot of teams, and then there may be a few that are on the bottom, but um, it, it's going to be like it has been for, you know, the whole time this conference has been together, that at any time and any night, you know, you gotta, bring, you gotta come to play, otherwise you're gonna be in trouble. And it, it makes it fun, um, makes it enjoyable as a coach, and, it, and I think it makes it fun for the fans and for the players. Well, thanks so much for coming in and good luck with your season. When I return, Marty will join me on the set and we'll finish up tonight's show. I will keep dancing on point, even if it hurts. My arm is killing me, but I'll just play through the pain anyway. Don't play through the pain. See your healthcare provider and follow their instructions for rest and recovery. Visit StopSportsInjuries.org. Chris, I think the, this is one of the best shows we've had uh, since we've been doing this. The coaches are really outstanding in their uh, interviews. Yeah, they get, you know, we like to hear about, you know, their different players and it's, you know, it's nice for the community to find out who the guys are so when they come out to the games, some names and things like that to watch for. Uh, also, of the four coaches, three of those coaches have games. Uh, when we did the taping, it was a Monday. They have games on Tuesday, so they're given other time, that's yeah. for sure. Sometimes I wonder, the athletic directors and coaches, they, they give them six days of practice, seven days of practice, and boom, we start on a Tuesday right away. Let's recap the seasons, uh, the, the conferences from last season. Uh, first of all, the uh, Central Lakeshore Conference. Uh, you had mentioned when you talked with Brett about their outstanding run, and of course, Oostburg always seems to be tough. Yeah, and last year, Sheboygan Christian Conference champions last year, and they've been just unbelievable run, and I, I think that's going to come to a close this year, but, you know, enjoy the run while you got it, that's for sure. <laughs> At least they had a run. Yes. Now, the Fox River Classic Conference is... Uh, was interesting again as it is every year, but uh, they had some outstanding teams. Yeah, they did, and I really like this year. Uh, you know, it's going to be one team way out in front this year, but last year the, it was really, really close. And and I think you're going to have some bottom teams again being right there, competitive with the the middle of the pack. But I think there's one team way out in front. <laughs> <laughs> All right, annual predictions uh, in the Central Lakeshore. I've got since they're off the run, Christian not going to be nearly as tough. Uh, is Oosburg. Who do you have? Yeah, I like Oosburg too. They have some players that have played on the varsity since they were sophomores, and they've been together. You got the Keller brothers uh, led there, and you know that's a team to go out there if you don't, you know, wanna, if you have nothing to do on a on a Tuesday night or a Friday night, go out to Oosburg and watch that team because that's going to be one of the best uh, teams in the state. A lot of stability in their coaching too. Uh, Fox River Classic Conference. Um, I both, I think, we're both uh, agreed that the peers far and away the best team. Yeah, I think there really is. And I, I, not to put down the conference or anything, but there's been a lot of graduation over the last couple of years of good athletes and things. And uh, De Pere has pretty much been steady along the, the line there. And I think hands down, they're going to be the best. All right. Thanks a lot, Chris. And uh, thanks goes out to the coaches for giving their time and uh, contributing to our show. Our first game will be uh, December 11th when uh, Sheboygan North invades South. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, everybody. And we'll see you down the road.